This is Simon with the Caddis Fly Shop. I'm going to show you guys how to use this hairline zirconia rake today. It's a tool that I like to use a lot. Um, I think it's a better way to get dubbing out of a hair's mask than trimming it out and blending it up. So this is a ceramic rake and what it does is as you rake in the mask it pulls out all of the under dubbing kind of like this. Now I think um, what's really nice about it is you can separate these guard hairs right here from the underdubbing, um, which is what you really want to build the body, unless you want a really buggy look. But it's really nice that it separates that. Um, that's why I really like it. They're pretty popular. Um, it's a tool that I use all the time. So I'm going to tie for you guys today a um, Guide's Choice Hairs ear with a partridge collar and a little bit of flash. So. We're going to be tying this today on the Umpqua U-Series UC400BL. Um, this is a forged hook, so it's super strong. I have a lot of confidence in it. Um, I'm going to be using the hairline slotted tungsten beads 3 16 in metallic pink or 4.6 millimeters and uh, Danville's 140 denier um, thread with um, some medium soft wire and then some Magnum Flashaboo for a little flash under the collar. So let's get started. So to start this fly, I like to do a couple of wraps right here, secure my thread, and then um, to do the tail on this fly, and part of the reason why I chose this pattern to explain how this rake works is um, to do the tail for the fly, you actually trim off some of the guard hairs from the mask. Um, and that's The rake makes it really easy to get some of the guard hairs out. Um, and you can kind of see, get a little pinch down here. Um, makes it really easy to get a uh, little tail back here. Otherwise, it's super hard to get the guard hairs out. Um, kind of separates it so you can get exactly what you need. So put a little tail in right there. Looks super buggy. Um, secure that with some thread wraps down here. And then take about, I don't know, I'm gonna do a little bit more just to be safe, but like maybe like three inches of this soft wire right here. And I like to secure it from the bottom down here. I think it looks cleaner when you wrap it up from the bottom, but there's really, you can kind of do it from anywhere. And then what we're going to want to do at this point is build up a profile and a little bit of a taper towards the head. And the nice thing about the rake too is if you're just tying like maybe one of these, you can just, I kind of rake as I go so that I don't end up breaking out way too much dubbing. Um, that helps me a little bit. And I think the dubbing uh, straight from the hair's mask I think makes a better noodle too. Um, it's partially why I like to use it over the package dubbing. So this tool makes it really easy to uh, have access to that really good like under fur dubbing that is below those guard hairs that are sometimes hard to get past on the hair's mask. So starting back here, I like to make a really, I like to start small with this dubbing back here um, to create like a very small taper towards the back. And it's nice, so I kind of will rake as I go. I kind of raked a bunch at the beginning, so I'm okay, but... It's cool, Hairline makes all of these masks in tons of different colors, which is really cool if you don't want the natural color. Um, I have a couple different ones that I like to work with, and it's cool. Sometimes I actually like to use the rake and rake from different masks and kind of blend my own colors together. That's one pretty useful thing for that rake, too.
And as I work my way up this body, I'm making the noodles a little bit fatter and wrapping them a little bit tighter to kind of build this profile up towards the head. Now we should, after this wrap, I think, have a good profile built up into that body. So now at this point, what I like to do is do these, um, the wraps with this wire. So right now I'm tying on a Renzetti Traveler and I really like this rotary function because it helps you get fairly even um, wraps of your uh, wire which helps with kind of the durability of the fly and it gives it that ribbing look. I don't think the fish really care if it's really perfect but I like how it looks when, a, when it looks a little more perfect so I like that feature on this vise a lot. Um, so then what I would do is take a little strip of that magnum flash be right here and I like to fold it over itself for the um, kind of flashing spot. I find if you fold it over itself, kind of like double it over itself like this, and then um, like this down here, um, and then tie it in. When you fold it over, it's doubled up and has like a little bit brighter of a hot spot than if you would just do it just by itself. So we'll kind of secure that in right here on the bottom. And then Add a little more dubbing in front of it, and then we'll put in our partridge for the collar. Okay. Okay, so then we will take our Hungarian partridge feather right here. Now I'll pull them, the fibers back like this until I just have a couple left at the top like this and then I like to tie it in on the top right here because it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. Like this. And then I like to trim off this excess. And then I will kind of palmer this and wrap it around like so. And then it kind of looks messy, but I will kind of force them all to go back like this. And we'll trim off this excess right here. And then at this point, what we're going to do is right in the middle here, we're going to kind of separate these, the collar on it, and then we're going to fold this flash spot back over. And you know what, we're going to put a little bit more dubbing to hide that thread. This time a kind of a smaller noodle if we can because we're working up close to the bead. We don't want to crowd it too much. Yeah, so now we will pull this kind of flash spot back over right here. Um, and we'll cut this off. And then what I like to do before I whip finish is add just a little bit more dubbing to kind of hide those last thread wraps right here. So I'll put just a very small amount right here. Find my whip finish tool, get this out of my way. And then
couple whip finishes there, and then snip it off. And then there you've got your guide's choice. Here's a hair's ear with the hot bead. You have a little flash spot on the bottom. Kind of show it off like that. Works super good. It's kind of a searching attractor pattern. Especially when it's colder, it can get some fish's attention. I like to use it on our local rivers here, the Mackenzie and the Willamette uh, in the winter and in the summer too, especially in the winter though. Um, and that's it, the guide's choice hair's ear. Here. Here's the um, hairline rake that I like to use a ton. Um, works super good. And all of that is on our website at caddisflyshop.com. Thank you.